Hello and welcome back to another I Am Ampersand video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Warlock class in the Mysteries of Pandaria expansion. We will be meeting the Mantid as well as more Shaw. But while we're at the top of the video, we might as well discuss this set's keyword. That keyword is channel. Channel is an end of turn effect that does something as long as you have the required amount of mana available at the end of your turn. If two cards both require one, you only need to have one mana available. But just keep channel in mind as we move forward into the set. First, we're going to take a look at the first card. That card is Mad Empress Shekzir. Mad Empress Shekzir is a 6 mana 4 4 legendary minion with battle cry, summon both attendants. Shekzir's left hand is a 3 mana 2 3 minion with enemy minions and locations cost 2 more. Shekzir's right hand is a 3 mana 2 3 minion with enemy spells and weapons cost 2 more. So, a very powerful disruption tool right off the bat. Uh, not to mention, we're looking at 8, 10 in stats for 6 mana. And with the cost increases, it's going to make it a lot more difficult for your opponent to respond to these. I could see this slotting into some sort of Reno deck if they happen to get support in Warlock in the future. But overall, I think this is a powerful legendary minion for Warlock to pick up, uh, regardless if you're using it just for the stats or the disruption effect or both. But with that, we're going to move on to our first spell, Descent Amongst the Ranks. Descent Amongst the Ranks is a 3 mana fell spell with all targets are chosen randomly until your next turn. So essentially what this does is play Noggin Fogger on the board, and you don't have a minion that can be cleared. It just affects everything. If they are attacking, if they are casting spells, if they are targeting with the hero power or minions effect, they will choose randomly. If they try to emote at you, they could get the oops emote, just like Mayor Noggin. This almost has a stalling type of effect like you might see in Ice Block or Solid Alibi. Albeit, I don't think that's necessarily a 3 mana effect. But nevertheless, uh, that wraps it up for Descent Amongst the Ranks. Up next, we're going to be taking a look at Manted Stinger. Manted Stinger is a 4 mana 6 3 minion with life steal and battle cry. This minion attacks a random enemy minion. Excess damage is dealt to the enemy hero. So there is an off chance that this minion trades favorably and you get to keep a body on board, but with that 3 health, I don't see that happening too often. I don't know if this is a necessarily bad minion, but it's not that exciting. It does remind me of the 2 mana 2-2 two, two Thornvale Tentacle, that lifesteal minion that would deal 2 random damage. This has a pretty similar vibe to that, not necessarily the same way of applying it, but the same vibe. But with that in mind, let's go ahead and move on to our next card. That card is the Doubtful Spellbreaker. The Doubtful Spellbreaker is a 5 mana 3-8 minion with, at the end of your turn, curse a playable card in your opponent's hand. They have one turn to play it. So this minion has an end of turn effect that is effectively the same as Chaos Gazer. If they don't remove it, though, it repeats turn after turn, and if you have two of them, that would compound and potentially make it so that they can't play both. I see this as a potentially powerful minion, but it does feel pretty comparable to the Warrior's Spellbreaker that they have. This could also just eliminate combo pieces that they're not ready to use seeing as this one isn't spell specific and can hit any card in their hand. But that just about wraps it up for the Doubtful Spellbreaker. The next card we're going to take a look at is going to be All Consuming Doubt. All Consuming Doubt is a 9 mana shadow spell that reads give all enemy minions minus 5 minus 5. Take control of any that survive. So you will be clearing your opponent's board and if they have any minions that do stick around they become yours. Albeit weaker but yours. I could see this making it into a Highlander style of deck alongside Twisting Nether. If this was ran in a Highlander style of deck, it could be ran alongside Sargeras as well as Reno for a total of four different board removals. Granted, they are all costly, but it's something that you might consider running in an, as an alternative or alongside it. And I do think that the ability to steal any of the minions that happen to survive could be a game-winning effect for you, depending on what you steal. If that were to take a Thaddeus, well, now it's your Thaddeus. 
But that's going to wrap it up for all consuming doubt. Next, let's take a look at Shaw Matron. Shaw Matron is a 6 mana 6 4 minion with taunt and death rattle. Summon 3 2 2 Shaw with taunt. So, right off the top, this feels pretty reminiscent to cards like Void Lord, but with a Shaw flavor. I do see this having a lot of potential upside as you continue to put Shaw on the board and maintain the presence. This definitely will help you maintain bodies on board. But with that, we're going to go ahead and move into our next card, Shaw Patron. Shaw Patron is a 4 mana 3-3 three, three minion with channel 2. Summon copies of your Shaw. Copies are not copied. So essentially, this minion will continue to copy your Shaw turn after turn turn after turn and if you happen to get two Shaw patrons out they would copy each other and make more copies of other ones. This could potentially snowball forever if you can protect your minions or, or more particularly your Shaw. And if we've learned anything from the other classes Shaw love to swarm and they are definitely going to be able to do so. The next card we're going to take a look at is Shaw Extortion. Shaw Extortion is a 4 mana shadow spell that reads give your Shaw plus 1 plus 2 wherever they are. Shuffle this back into your deck. So this is a reoccurring Shaw wide buff regardless of where they're at. I do want to point out the difference though with the priest one. It does this one says wherever they are. The priest one said whenever they are. So this doesn't seem like it's going to be as strong necessarily. Now the fact that this is repeatable and it is a shadow spell means that it could be searchable. You could pull it from your deck a little bit easier. But nevertheless I think this might be the driving force behind the Warlock Shaw package. Up next we're going to be taking a look at the Warlock's last legendary card. That card is the Tome of Zareth. The Codex of Zerath is a 1 mana 1 6 legendary weapon with death rattle for the rest of the game. Your fire spells are fell spells, your fell spells cost 1 less and have life still. And for those of you who are not in the know, this is a callback to a quest line that Warlock would have in World of Warcraft that allowed them to turn their fire from the typical orange and red into green. Uh, I didn't turn them necessarily into fell spells, but I think that that would make this card usable in some capacities, especially with the Barrels of Sludge getting nerf buffed in their cost uh, in the December uh, update. Some not notable fire spells that could be affected by this would be Hellfire, which all of a sudden goes from a medium level board clear to a board clear with uh, life still as well as some others that will be added into the core set. But a pretty powerful effect once you've completed the requirements of breaking your weapon. But that's going to complete the coat. But that's going to do it for the Codex of Zareth. Up next, we're going to be looking at the Ominous Seed. The Ominous Seed is a 1 mana, 1 durability location that reads use your hero power one time, upgrades each turn, Death Rattle, if used five times, summon a terrible turnip. So what this card does is allow you to use your hero power multiple times in a turn. And if you've used it five times when this breaks, it will summon a terrible turnip, which is a one mana 10-10 minion. So while for the longest time we've been excited about a four mana 7-7, seven, seven, we now have a one mana 10-10. A 1 mana 10 10. Not a 10 mana 1 1 like the rabbit in Dark Moon Fair, but a 1 mana 10 10. But if we just ignore the turn up itself, this is a very powerful effect. Even if you just used it for 2 or 3 hero powers, that's effectively 1 mana, draw 3, take 6 damage. And I'm pretty confident that most warlocks would be happy to play that. But that's gonna head but that's gonna wrap it up for the warlock set review. Uh, please let me know down in the comments what you thought. Uh, leave a like, uh, subscribe, uh, all that good stuff. Uh, for the last few videos, I'd been contemplating what I wanted to do once I finished this. And with Warrior and the neutral set, only things that I have left to complete, I thought about what my next logical step would be. And that was the mini set. And I have big plans for the mini set and what that will look like. Um, but I have also been contemplating going forward and planning out an entire year. Um, 
if you guys think that sounds like something you'd be interested in seeing, let me know in the comments. Um, but otherwise, I'll see you in the Warrior video. See you soon.